Summer 2023 will be defined for us as the Summer Backyard Makeover. For the past three months, we've been helping Ted and Wilma transform their backyard. If you don't know, Ted and Wilma are Jess's parents, and this summer they recruited our help in bringing their backyard to life. So join us for one of the biggest and longest projects that Jess and I have ever undertaken. This is my parents' backyard. It is currently a work in progress. Today, we are going to work on building a beautiful, we're putting down a rock bed, right? Today, we're going to be laying a flagstone patio and a rock bed to make this dirt area look more beautiful. <laughs> So here's the layout for the landscaping. We're gonna do a rock riverbed where I'm standing and where Ted is digging in front of the patio and then gravel and large flagstone in front of the shed. Where Jess is standing, we're gonna add a rock garden with some cottage vibes. And where Desmond is wallowing in the dirt, we're gonna add pavers for an outdoor table and chairs. Desmond, you're so dirty. If you've ever done landscaping like this, you'll know that it's very labor intensive work. A lot of digging, a lot of hitting roots and digging up those roots and leveling and all that stuff. Lucky for us because the theme of the backyard, the aesthetic of the backyard is cottage, cottage vibes. There's room for imperfection, room for error. The levelness and how things lay does not have to be immaculate and absolutely perfect. We got a small pallet of the flagstone. I think it was it was probably a thousand pounds. I'm not quite sure how much it weighed, but it was a lot. And they all are different shapes and sizes, and mostly around one to two inches thick, but I would also say up to like a square foot in size. Now, when it comes to laying the flagstone for us, there's really not a method to this madness, or at least the only method to this madness is just making sure that when we lay all the pieces, they kind of fit like a puzzle and everything just looks like it's supposed to be there. Next up on the list is to work on the section where we're gonna lay the pavers for the outdoor table and chairs that you can kind of see on the patio right there. Eventually that's where the pergola is gonna go and everything else, so we gotta move that out. We did have to dig down and grade this section a little bit so that the pavers would match up with the existing patio and then the pavers that are kind of part of the walkway. Laying down this garden fabric, this black fabric, is kind of a, a no-brainer, it's obvious. We need to lay this down so that no weeds, no grass, nothing will grow in this section. We don't want any grass growing in this rock bed, this rock garden, none at all. And this is the only part of this landscaping project that we're actually gonna try to make semi-perfect. So we bought a huge bag of sand from Lowe's that we're gonna use as our, our base before we put down the pavers and the rock. To screed all this sand and make it as level as possible, we're gonna throw a couple of pieces of PVC pipe. I think this was like half inch PVC pipe and then use a two by four as kind of a straight edge and just screed the sand along and try to make it as flat and level as possible. Not really trying to level or center or anything like that. Nope. That's our that's our high spot. Everything will be level to that. So our first one's gonna be 50 and a half from here. So if we just move that paver over and make sure we're parallel. Measure, yeah. yeah, so that first block we laid, like you said, that is the high point. That's the highest spot of this area. It's also approximately the center point of all of our pavers. So we'll start there and lay all of our other pavers around it, leveling to that center point. Once we get them all laid, it's just a matter of double checking to make sure they're all as close to level as possible. This might come as a surprise, but the easy part is over. Now we're on to the hard part. Now that the pavers are down and our landscaping fabric is down and the flagstone is down, we're moving on to all of the gravel and the river rock. It 
It's a brand new day and I've got to psych myself up to do this job because this river rock is incredibly heavy. Oh, here we go. Not, not individually, they're very light, but you put a shovel in there and you try to lift all this stuff. I am telling you, it is so labor intensive. Now this seemed like a good idea at the time. I cut the side of the bag that we got from Lowe's, which I think you're supposed to be able to return, but I saw another way. I cut the side of the bag so that I could funnel the rock out into this snow shovel and then transport it to the rock bed. The sole purpose was just so that I didn't have to bend over so many times to pick up all of this rock. Oh, and this pile here, this is not from that bag that's on the trailer. This is a completely different pile sitting on a tarp. Lucky for me though, it's all on the ground so I can just bend on my knees and use a shovel to forcibly put the rock on the shovel and throw it into the riverbed. After we were done with that, Wilma and I ran back to the rock store to get a few more slabs, well not a few more, several more slabs of the flagstone to act as a walkway headed to the back fire pit through our rock garden. And we also got uh, large stones to be able to interlace in the rock bed and in the, uh, the river bed. And now we move on to the pergola build, one of my personal favorite projects that I've ever been a part of. The dimensions for this project is approximately 16 feet by 13, and then the overall height, I believe, was around 10 feet. Um, we have to fit it in this little patio area. We're also using cedar. Cedar, as you may know, can be very expensive. Somewhere between 700 billion and a trillion, 300 million billion dollars. And so we called all over the area, several different lumber yards, trying to find a good price, one that fit our budget. We were able to find a place out in the middle of nowhere that gave us a really good deal and dropped off this massive pile of cedar, beautiful cedar. The first few steps of building a pergola can be very time consuming and tedious, but it's vital that you take your time and get your measurements correct, get everything square, or else you're gonna have problems down the road. We're gonna use this side wall as our reference point to lay out the very first base for our six by six post. We need to measure off the wall to accommodate for the thickness of our material and for the bolt and the washer and the nut that's going to be attaching the beam to the post. That was approximately two and three quarters. But unbeknownst to us, there was one thing that we did measure that we didn't add to that total measurement. And we'll realize that later on. We make a mistake before we even get this thing going. But for now, we're going to continue to do it the wrong way. We'll use a chalk line to line up these two bases. And then we'll also do the same thing for the final two. And now it's time to drill into the concrete. We're using my Makita 40 volt hammer drill. This thing works for purposes like this, but a rotary hammer drill would be much better. For this project, we're gonna use half inch by four inch concrete anchor bolts by Tapcon. These things are gonna work perfect. Now you might think we need to go ahead and crank this joker, but we wanna wait until the other bases are set so that we can take some measurements and just make sure everything is nice and square and then we'll tighten things down. So this video just took a drastic turn. We have a new guest that's going to offer all of his expertise and help. His name's Adam. Pergola Building Extraordinaire is here to offer his expertise and his help and all of his muscle. Again, I'm using our Makita 40 volt hammer drill, and this thing is a hoss. It's definitely more than capable of doing this job, or at least maybe one or two holes. But at this point, this is the fourth hole. We've been drilling for a while. We've been putting this thing to the test. We may have run into some rebar down in the patio, and it eventually just overheated and stopped working. So that sucks. Next up on the list, we've got to set this post on the post base. We've got to get it plumb, got to get it level, 
I'm gonna use a couple of two by fours to help secure it and level it before we attach the hardware at the base. And this is the moment where I think Ted realizes <laughs> that something's not right. That two by 12 is not gonna fit between that post. So we have to take the two by fours off and take the post down. But we have a solution for this. Now that we have that fixed and we've got a place to put our 2x12 so it doesn't interfere with the wall, we're going to set it back up. We have to add the hardware that is going to be adjacent to the wall since we can't reach behind there. We'll have to add that first and then rotate the post to set the other pieces of hardware. In continuation of the tedious work, we're gonna go ahead and set the second post. And you would think, hey, why don't we go ahead and notch it out? Well, we can't do that quite yet because the ground, the patio might not be level. So what we're gonna do is set this post, get it all plumb, and then we'll have to use a line level from the bottom of our notch on the far right post, run it across to the next post and make that mark. And that way we know that is where we're gonna begin the cut for our notches. That way our two by 12 is gonna be perfectly level. Ted and Adam had to make a run to the store. So we got it notched out and sanded down, looking really good and setting it is all up to me. All right, so our very first post is fully up and it's almost seven o'clock. Uh, we definitely did not make as much progress as we wanted to today. Uh, Ted and Adam had to run back to the hardware store. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. To get a bit that's longer, long enough to be able to go through our six by six post. The one I got is not long enough. And then from there, what we'll do, set our, our bolts through our uh, ledger board, call it that. And it's been notched into the post. Our two by 12 will go, will sit on top of those notches. And then this is a part of the system. It looks just like this, it's adjustable. This is the part of the system that will connect six by six post with the two by two twelve, two by twelve um, ledger board or beam or whatever you want to call it. At this point, we need to put up the beam. This is our first beam. This is a two by twelve by twenty, and what we're going to do is make a couple of marks on here, get it flush with the back beam or the back post make our mark on the left side so that we can cut it where we want it. And when I say that this is the heaviest piece of wood, I'm not kidding. This thing is definitely a two person lifting job unless you have some sort of you know, I don't know, crane or something. So we ran into a bit of a dilemma yesterday when we had to make a little bit of adjustment at the top of this board and notch it so that it all fit correctly. That changed the, the length that we needed for the bolts that we had. And these are kind of a special order bolt. There's nobody around here that has them. So what we had to do was make a quick adjustment, run to Lowe's, buy some cap screws, that we think are gonna fit. And we're gonna give that a shot and see if we can make it work. And a huge congratulations to Ted for figuring this out. The cap screws do work. They are just long enough to fit on both sides and reach all the way through our beam and our post. So 
Praise the Lord, we can keep moving forward. And just a word of wisdom, if there is anything in your project, no matter what it is, that's major and it changes, there's always something else down the line that's going to need to be changed as well as a result of the initial change. And this is an example of that. So, but now that we have a drill bit that is long enough and we've got the right screws for these two posts, the exception, we can go ahead and pre-drill our holes on the other post and get those bolts and washers and nuts all attached to the beam. There was another run to the hardware store, so setting this next post is all on me. Pretty straightforward. We've already kind of done this method, as you've seen before, but basically gonna be using these two by fours to help stabilize it and keep it plumb. You're probably wondering why I switched the two by fours. You have to set the two by four on the side that the post is leaning towards so that that way you can stabilize it and send it back so that it will be a level. When you're leveling and checking for plumb on a post, it's usually, I would say, a good idea to check a couple of different spots on the post for plumb just in case the wood has a, div a divot or any kind of variation that would affect the device that you're using that is checking for level. And once the boys got back from the hardware store, I was done with the post. So we're moving on to using the string and the line level again to mark where the bottom of our beams are gonna be for the other side. Once the lines are drawn and our supports are added, we'll throw the two by 12s up there. We'll replumb everything, clamp it down. We'll make our marks for our decorative edges and then also pre-drill our holes to attach the beams to the post. Bring it all down, take it to the miter saw to cut our decorative edges, throw it back up there. Granted, we are doing more tedious work, but it's worth it. The alternative is to leave it up there and freehand it with a circular saw. We didn't want to do that because we wanted to be able to do a repeatable, accurate cut. The angle is approximately 37 degrees across the pergola for our rafters and for these beams. So we want that to look good and consistent. So we're gonna bring it down and use our miter saw to do that job. Once all that's done, it's time to move on to the fun part, more math to equate the spacing for our purlins or our rafters or joists, whatever you want to call it. We want these rafters to be 16 on center and there's a few different ways you can do the math to get it as close as possible. I don't think it's ever going to be perfect, but this is the way we did it. We went ahead and added our first two boards. These are gonna sit on the inside of our post and we're gonna measure the distance between those two boards. They'll be a part of the equation, but we're actually gonna do it a little bit differently. So we'll set the those, we'll measure, we come up with 174 and a half inches. You divide that by 16, since you want them to be 16 on center, it's gonna give you 10.9, round up to 11. Because our boards are, the first two boards are already set, it's gonna be 11 spaces that we need and not 11 boards. So 11 spaces, that's 12 boards. We already have our first two, so we only need to cut and place 10 in the middle. Now, what we're doing here, as you see on Ted's side, we've got our joist hangers, and then on my side, there's nothing. We're gonna be using some extra hardware, some extra brackets to attach those rafters to the beams. So this is kind of the secondary side, whereas Ted's side is the primary side. And so what we're doing here is double checking to make sure that there's not a significant crown or warp in this ledger board that's going to affect the placement of these rafters. Now that that's done, it's time to move on to cutting these rafters and setting them in place.
We had two of these six by six by eight posts and we only approximately needed a little under four feet for each of these bracings. So what Ted's saying here, we're just gonna cut it in half and then we can cut our angle. And then what we'll do later on is use the Sawzall to trim off the excess uh, above the top. So we've got our second brace cut. Basically what we're gonna do, again, this is 37 degrees, similar to our um, joists and we're going to try to get as close to uh, button up against that bottom beam as we can. That's kind of our first one right there, but we've got our second one cut and we're gonna get this one clamped real quick before we put this one up there. And then what we'll do is drill through the joist and the brace, put another big old bolt in there, and do the same thing on all the other three corners. Never underestimate the simplicity but the effectiveness of a string and a line level. Once again, using this method to determine where this next bracing piece is gonna go. We're gonna use two bolts here at the bottom of this bracing to connect it to the post. And I want it to go through both pieces of wood. The actual post, I only want it to go through a little bit over halfway, somewhere around halfway. And so that equaled out to about 11 and a quarter of an inch from the end of the post to where I'm gonna start my pre-drilled hole that you see me doing here. And I'm just gonna repeat that on all the other braces. We'll repeat the same process to attach the bracings to these rafters and pre-drill all of our holes, measure kind of the center of the board and then place our washer about an inch apart from the center line. So each bolt will be about two inches apart. And ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the home stretch. All we have to do is use our Sawzall to trim off the excess of the bracing and any of those six by six posts, and then we're done. All right, well, good morning. It's another beautiful summer day. We are back at Ted and Wilma's. Today we're going to be completing the pergola. The only thing left to do is put a roof on it. We've been waiting a couple of weeks for the roof to get here and today we're gonna to be installing it. Ted has already prepped the shims that we're gonna to have to use to be able to slope the, the pergola, uh, the roof for the pergola. We're ready to just hop on in and get started. So the roof is gonna be running this way, uh, therefore our shims are gonna be running that way as well, and we want them to be 24 inches on center. So basically just marking every 24 inches. Good morning, Ted. Good morning. What are you working on? Trying to get this gutter to fit. This is a two by three gutter piece. This is a two by three gutter. They should go together, and they don't. Because this one's just made a little bigger and this one's made a little smaller. So since we got to get over the roof of the pergola and the gutter came down, I'm modifying the gutter a bit. So we're going to come out with a really sharp 90. Most 90s are angled a little bit, so they, they always taper. So this one's going to come straight out and then we're going to turn it this way and then come back against the wall and down just to get it over the roof. So I bought a couple of these specialty pieces here that were sized for this gutter, but I don't know if the specialty piece is a little off or the gutter's a little cheap that I bought at the big box store. So they don't fit perfectly. So I've modified it a little bit there to make it fit and should be good. This is the current downspout position right here. And are you gonna put a new one in? Are you gonna cut a new one or are you just gonna attach to that? I'm gonna to attach to that one, I think. I've got the, the proper pieces that I can come around and make it around the corner okay. above the roof line. So the next thing is to get this all fitted up and cut, get that light down and get the gutter finished out up there. <laughs> Here are the shims. They are four inches starting at the top side and then it tapers off all the way down here and then it will connect to the next section, which begins to taper off even thinner, way down here, all the way to the end. Uh, 
Okay. Do you have any plywood that we could put on top of this to use as a... Yeah, we do. We've got that three-quarter inch ply. Whatever I thought it was. This is three. This is number two. So we need to butt it up against the back side of this. Basically what I'm doing here is kind of try to do every other one so that there is, um, you know, good balance on both sides. And we're trying to make some headway in this project. It's almost lunch. But we have a surprise that's taking place today that was a little unplanned. It's a good surprise, so uh, let's go see what that surprise is. <laughs> so Ted and Wilma got a new dog. He's already pooped and peed. Who is was, this? Is he not the best He's boy? So cute. Isn't he sweet? He is the sweetest thing. Come on, up front. Let's go. Good job. Yeah. That's a good baby. Oh, he says, well, hello. Oh, he's kissing him. He says, hello, friend. Oh, he likes him. Look at that. He's like, hello, how are you, big guy? Desmond's like, but wait. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did you hear him cry? Was that Desmond or? No, that was, that was newbie. He's like, okay, shake it off. Now Desmond's crying. So we've got one, two, three, four sets. And how many more do you need? Like 20. Uh, we've got to do one, two, three, and then eight. Plus three is 11, so 11. And then there's mom over here with this puppy. This little pepperoni. This puppy is half the size of your big grown adult dog. Look at that big baby. He is really heavy. He is, he's a big boy. The donkey monkey. Dad, what are you doing? What you got going on here? Just checking the fit of the brackets with those set. Is it right? We'll see. They're not the same brackets that they show in the illustration, so oh, I'm not sure. Hey, bud. So this one's much wider. So the center of that should be at the center of that board, right? And it's not going to attach to the wood. Attach. We're going to do the first row and see where they all land. And hopefully they land OK. Flushed up at the end down there. Okay. Okay, so I think we figured out a pretty good system here. Go ahead and set this bracket here. We're gonna finish up this row. But basically what we're gonna do is we've already set uh, that one and we haven't set the first one. So here's our, our first section. But I think what we're gonna do instead of setting our shims, what we'll do is now that we've got this side ready to go, we'll go ahead and run our sheet and then we'll set the, um, the shim underneath that and toenail that in as opposed to trying to like make sure it's dead 24 on center here making sure it's perfectly spaced so i think it'll be easier to, to like set it that way and go about it that way so we've got uh three of these suckers up there we're gonna do the end one over here next but we've got to rip a portion of it off so it'll fit snug on the end so this is our last piece and we need to rip this little lip off right here and we're gonna try i brought my track saw and we're gonna see if we can get it right up where that little lip is right there, that edge. I'm lucky for Teddy boy. I brought my track saw. <laughs> and I do have a second track, but I knew that if there was the potential that we were gonna use it, 
we were, it's gonna be redundant to have two put together because we were just gonna end up having to move it anyways. We are in mosquito territory. Here comes, here comes Buck. He's ready to go. Are you boys besties? Pat, what you got there? Transformer. I've never seen something so old school. Do we need to lower everything to meet that? We have a puppy coming to assist. And there we go. What did Ted said something? He said something really positive. Well, he said, that's great. I'm gonna have to get me one of those. You have things. to get one of those. He said it went really well. He said that went really well. Rip that joker right on down the line. Ted has finally got the trim piece on the piece of cover that we ripped. And it looks pretty good. What's the secret that you found out? Just got to use this to cut as you go. <laughs> so we finally got the edge one all done and the trim piece all set up and now we are attacheing it. So if you line the washer up with that line right there, uh -huh. then it should be perfect. Okay. okay. Sorry. Here it is. A little progress report for the evening. We've got pretty much all of them complete. And this side's got some nice trim on it. For whatever reason, the instruction, they tell you to start here, work that way, and then go back. So we're gonna have to flip our brackets, our spacers, which is odd. So this last piece, we will probably have to rip it. But other than that, we're gonna call it a night because we're both really tired and I'm a little sunburnt. Yeah, here and there. So we're gonna go take some showers and get cleaned up and rest. And we'll be back tomorrow to finish up this job. Check this out. So here's the situation this morning. We have this shim right here. We got to put this little roof section on. This shim needs to move to the right a little bit, but we've already attached the roof and this screw right here, we can't reach it. Not without this little right angle attachment that we just bought and that should work. Just like that, it's magic. Coffee mugs say. It's Ohio State. It's the worst football team in the country. Year to year. Go balls. <laughs> Dad had zero comeback. Busy. I don't have time for paltry teams that are under under uh, suspension. I will say, so I was born and raised in Tennessee. We used to watch Tennessee football all the time. I kind of lost interest over the years, but recently I've adopted a, a spirit for Ohio State Buckeyes. Oh H, because that's the only thing they'll watch. What do you sports wise? Respond to what he said. Oh H. I O. Yay. Now we're at the point where I do have to use 
the window here. Start with this leg. It's like doing the limbo. The gun and the splits. All right, we got the last one sitting up here. It's a little bit of a tricky situation because it's on a, on a shim, but we're gonna have to screw it in back here. I'm not gonna film myself doing this because this is gonna be really difficult. Hi. This is hard. I got it. You need Justin. I got it here and all the way down. And then from here up, it is too tight against the socket. So even the right angle won't work. So it's just gonna have to be. While Ted is climbing around on the roof, I'm trying to figure out the best way to trim all of this right here. I'm gonna try chalk and a jigsaw. So here we have Ted. We have tied a piece of string to something heavy and we're gonna try to figure out how far out we want this to go based on the gravel. Per the website, it's like one to two inches in overhang, but it might be a little bit more for us in order for the cover to go into the gravel, so. Pretty close to the edge, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're like maybe two inches from the patio. That's better. You could probably go a little bit more. Here we have Ted marking approximately two and a half inches off of this edge, this last rafter, and that's going to be where we cut. Jess is plugging you in because you're dying and you need a charge. So I can see down through the clear top, right at the edge of the our board that we measured off of. So I'm just measuring two and a half inches off of that. And then I'll need a straight edge so I can mark a line across here. Okay. Find something that'll fit in between here. I don't have the level that we need, but I do have this poplar inside edge. So get rid of the mark inside of that mark. Hopefully that's satisfactory. Oh gosh. Did it work? Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be happy about this, Ted. It's a Bosch blade for a Bosch jigsaw. Look how happy the jigsaw is. We're trying to find these end caps. This is really bright out. I, I, I don't know what, what you're talking about, Ted. Oh, here we go, here we go, found them. I saw them before you even did. And you didn't say nothing. They seem to be all the same. All the boys have left to do is put these end caps on and Let cover up. You're gonna put them on the other end. Cover up the ends with metal. Done. You got it. You have finished the pergola. How you feel? I feel pretty good. Dad, how you feeling? Good. Honest opinion, what do you think about this thing? I like it. Very happy with how it turned out? I am. So, what was the hardest part in installing this thing? Um, I think we had to work around being under this eave. So it made it very hard to get the panels under the soffit. Under, under the soffit, the panels tucked up under the brackets that were there, and made it very hard to secure that in. So that was the toughest thing for me. But you're happy to be done, right? I'm happy to be done. Now, what was the issue with it? The instruction said to start here in the center and work that way, but then come back and do the final two. What was that? Yeah, about? that's what it looked like. So that's the way they 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 said to just work it from the middle out. So we worked it one direction, but then we had to reverse the brackets on the other side because the way they're made, we couldn't have installed them like they were. Mm. There's only one thing that will take this backyard to the next level, a hot tub. 
Now to get into the hot tub, we need to build some steps. We got plenty of cedar left over, so we're gonna use that. Here's a little sketch up of how we're gonna build this thing. These steps need to be removable because they're gonna be sitting in front of the access panel for the steps. We thought about adding wheels to it, but I had a better idea. I'm gonna build two platforms, the base and then the top one. The top one is gonna sit inside of the bottom one, making it removable and making the bottom portion able to move and slide it on the concrete and then you can access the hot tub panel. The base was made with two by fours and then the top portion, I'm gonna rip down these two by tens to make my decorative edges, the mitered edges. For the top platform, again, the base is just two by fours and then the top is gonna to be all two by fours as well. So even those mitered ends, the mitered edges, those are gonna be two by fours as well. The final piece to this outdoor backyard makeover is gonna be a kitchen bar for Ted. Ted's got a pretty sweet setup back here with his griddle and his smoker, and he makes the best pork butt I have ever had. Anyways, to get this project off the ground and running, we've got a template to follow, some plans that Ted found online, and there's a cut list, so I'm gonna set up my cut sheet and just go to town. Once all of our pieces are cut, the assembly for this is pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of building the frame, which is really gonna be the front section. And if you're patient with me, you'll kind of see it all come together here. But using plenty of these black wood screws and wood glue, we'll put it all together. Using two by fours and these four by six posts, this is gonna be the front side of the bar. Before this thing got any heavier, we brought it around to the back so that Ted and I could continue the construction and assembly of this bar. And just like we've been doing, Ted pre-drilling all the holes, me adding the wood glue and screwing it together. And as you can see here, Desmond and Buck are best friends now. After a few weeks together, they are kind of inseparable and they play a lot. And every night on our way home, he is completely zonked. And now that the bar is completely constructed, it's time to move on to adding the top and we're going to use tile. The base layer for the bar top is going to be just a quarter inch plywood. We'll get all of our measurements, make all of our cuts, and we'll set that on top of the bar, attached to the bar. The next layer is the cement board, which will follow the same measurements and template of the quarter inch plywood. And that's what we'll put our tile on top of. 
Now we're ready to start mixing our thin set and start laying down this tile. Mixing the thin set, we want to get to a peanut butter consistency. We kind of joked, do we want it to be organic peanut butter or more of a Walmart peanut butter? Somewhere in between. Ted decided he wanted to go black on black, so we got black tile and black grout. With direct sunlight, this color definitely gets really hot, but it also looks really good with the cedar. And that concludes the 90 day massive summer backyard makeover. Special thanks to Ted and Wilma, AKA mom and dad, for asking us for our help on this project. And if you made it to the end of this video and you enjoyed watching that, we make DIY videos just like this all the time. We're actually working on our next project right now. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, notification bell, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It definitely helps our channel out. And for all those that have already subscribed, thank you for joining us. We have been at this YouTube channel for like four years now, and we're actually starting to see some traction, and we really appreciate all the support that you guys give us. So thank you again. Now I've got to get back to our current project. Stay tuned for the next video.